Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're learning some Arduino basics. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that like button and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any updates. I do have my 1000 subscriber contest going on and you have to be a subscriber to be eligible. So today we're going to be talking about Arduino basics. I've had many, many requests for an Arduino intro video series and today we are starting that. And we will be starting that by making some flashing police lights. Now you've seen me make crossing signals, block signals, street lights, and this is gonna be some basic stuff compared to that, but hopefully it gets you started. For this tutorial, you'll need an Arduino Uno, a solderless breadboard for prototyping, some prototyping wires with DuPont connectors, some LEDs, and a couple of 1K resistors. All right, so let's get started. So let's first of all take a look at the Arduino Uno, which is the base form of the Arduino. So on this side, we have a bunch of digital pins all the way up to 13. And then we also have some serial connections down here so that you can talk to other Arduinos or other systems. Now on this side, we have a series of analog pins, A0 to A5. And then right next to it, we have our main power circuit with several ground connections, a five volt connection, and a 3.3 volt connection right there. So that's kind of the basic setup of the Arduino. You also have a DC power input and a USB plug. So we're going to take some of our prototyping wires. We're gonna connect one to pin 12, and then we're gonna connect another to a row on our solderless breadboard. Now there are many, many rows, and each one of these little rows is a solid electrical connection. And then we're going to take another wire and we're going to connect it into pin 13 and we are going to connect it into another row, making sure that these are not on the same row. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect up our ground circuit. This circuit has a common ground. Now the Arduino has three total ground hookups, two on one side and one on the digital side. We're going to use one of the analog side and we're going to connect that up into these little power strips that are right here. Now these power strips are all common to one side or the other, and they have a little break. So this board in particular has four total power strips. Next, we're going to hook up into another row from that power strip. The next thing that we are going to do is we're going to hook up some resistors into our circuit. Now we'll be putting this into the positive side of our circuit or the wires that come in from digital pins 12 and 13. Now we're gonna be hooking these up on the solderless breadboard. So what you wanna do is put them in the same row and then jump them over to another row. Now the resistors do have some leads so you can bend those in just like here. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other positive side. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to hook up our LEDs. And we'll be using two LEDs in this circuit. LEDs have two different leads on them. One is slightly longer than the other. The longer one is the anode or the positive. The shorter one is the cathode or the negative. Now we're going to bend the positive so that we can stretch it out and make the connection across the rows on the breadboard. Now you'll see that my positive is connected in the same row as the resistor row, and then my negative is connected 
in the same row as the common ground. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other LED. All right, we've made all our connections, so we can now hop over to the computer. All right, everyone, so we are now in the Arduino IDE, which is your programmer for Arduino. You write your programs, and Arduino programs are called sketches. So let's get into this. The basic two parts of any Arduino sketch are the setup and the loop, the void setup, as you see right here, and the void loop. So the setup is where you kind of put all the building blocks in place. It'll run once at the beginning of the program, and then you have your void loop, which runs continuously throughout your program. And all these things happen in the blink of an eye, typically. So let's go ahead and we're going to delete all of the extra text here. And now we're going to, before our setup, we need to declare some variables and some integers. So let's go ahead and we're going to declare an integer. We're going to type in INT for that. And you see how that turned blue? That means that we've typed it in in a format that is understood by the Arduino software. So if it turns a certain color, that means that it is understood if you're putting in something that's supposed to be some sort of command or identifier or something like that that's Arduino language. So INT stands for integer, and we are going to be calling LED1, and we're gonna make that digital pin 12, which means we're just going to type a 12 right there. So we have LED1 equals 12. So LED1 will always be looking at pin digital pin 12. And then you'll see we put a semicolon. Semicolon's gotta go after everything, every line that you type with a few notable exceptions. And then, if you ever wanna type some text beside it, if you're ever doing an instructional video like I do, you just do a double slash right here, and I will say, declares first LED out of pin 12, where you type something like that. And you don't have to put a semicolon after that. So the next one we're going to do, since we have two LEDs, we'll need to do another integer, and then we'll do LED2 equals 13. And then you'll see that we do declares second LED out of 13. So if you had more um, integers, variables, and different things like that, you would put them up in there. But right now we only have two things that we need to declare. So we can go ahead and head into our setup. So setup is where you do a lot of things. You would have, um, if you were starting something that could read back sensors for you, you would start it up here. Um, in this case, we are declaring that our integers are output. So the first thing we're gonna do, now you only have to do this for digital pins. So we're doing pin mode, LED, output. And you see how that turned blue as well, which means that I typed it properly. And then we're just gonna say, declares, whoops, I do believe I have a typo. You gotta be careful with those typos. So we'll say LED one is an output. Declares LED one as an output pin. And then we'll do pin mode again. And we'll do LED2 output. If you don't do space, we'll do output. And then we'll put our semicolon again. And then declares LED2 as an output pin. Okay, so let's look over everything we go before we start doing the program. So we have declared our integers, LED1 and LED2, are going to be whatever is digital pins 12 and 13. Now the reason we're just doing integers is because these values are going to need to change for the program. If they did not need to change, we could type constant integer like that. So that just literally means it remains constant. So let's go ahead and head into the loop. The loop is where our program is going to run. It's where what you actually want the Arduino to do 
that's where it's going to go. So let's go ahead and start. Now this is a very, very simple program. We're doing these police flashing lights. I did this because it's a really simple program to grasp and understand, but it also gives you an idea. So we're going to be using the delay feature. Now Arduinos measure time in milliseconds. So 1000 in the delay feature is going to equal one second. And that's going to become very important here in a second. So let's go ahead and we'll do so how do we write what we are going to have the leds do so in this case since it is a digital pin you can do digital write and then we're going to put in parentheses led one high so what this says is we will be supplying power to LED 1 and pin 13. Now this means we'll be outputting power to LED 1 and pin 13. So now you can see how all of this links up. So we'll go ahead and we'll write low for, for LED 2. I do believe I did a slight typo right there. There we go. And I did not need to put a did not need to put a semicolon there. Okay, so let's look at what we have so far. We can kind of like trace it back really quick. So we have LED one and LED two, and we have these as high and low. Now this means that it's going to be supplying power to LED one in pin twelve. Now why is it going to go to pin? Now why is it going to be supplying power? Well, we've said that LED1 and LED2 are outputs, which means that we are sending something through them. So, but why is LED1 going to be at a pin 12? Because we declared it up here. So, this is declared as what it is. This is declared as what it's doing. And this is our program. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a delay feature, which I just told you about. So we're going to go ahead and type delay. Now you can see that that turned orange. And then we're going to do a parenthesis and we're going to do 150. So that is a delay of 0 0.15 seconds. So like I said, it's measured in milliseconds, so that's 150 milliseconds. And then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna do digital right, LED one. Now we're gonna do low. And we're gonna say this cuts power to LED one in pin. 12 and we're also going to do digital right LED 2 high supplies power to LED 2 in pin 13 so now we've gone and reversed it we have cut the power here and we have supply power to the other LED so it appears to alternate. And then we're going to put our delay in. And we'll go ahead and say that that delays 0 0.150 seconds. Okay, so let's take a look at our entire program here. So what our program is going to do is it's going to turn on LED 1, so pin 12, for 150 milliseconds, and then it's going to cut it off and turn LED 2 on for 150 milliseconds. Now what's it going to do after that? Well, you can see that these are called loops, so it's going to just continuously 
loop through that until power is cut off to the Arduino. So this is a very simple way to do some flashing lights. Now let's go over where you are going to have, how you're going to put this into the Arduino. So we're gonna go up here to tools. And now this particular computer that I do my screen recording on does not like to be hooked up to my Arduino. But when you hook up your Arduino, you're going to get something that's going to say in this area, you're gonna get something that says like COM3, COM4, COM5, and those are your USB ports. So that is, whichever one is up, you'll want to click. Usually there's only one up unless you have multiple Arduinos hooked up to it. You'll also wanna make sure that you have your Arduino type selected. Now the Arduino Uno is right there. The other one I use a lot is the Arduino Nano. Um, there are some funky things if you get some of the off-brand Nanos that you have to be careful with. Um, let's see here, where is the, there's the Arduino Mega, there's the Leonardo. So there's quite a few to choose from, but for the most part, if you're doing the basics, you probably have an Arduino Uno, so you'll want the Arduino Genuino Uno. Um, that one, the Nano and the Mega are probably, I would say, the most popular. So we have a couple of Megas right here. Um, I would go with this one right here, the Genuino Mega. Okay, so that is how we would select where we're going to load this. If you ever want to look at your program and feedback while the Arduino is hooked in your computer, you can use a serial monitor, and we'll go over that when we go over sensors. And let's go ahead and you have these two options right here. You have a verify and an upload. Now, when you verify, it's gonna ask you to save your project. I'll show you real quick. And I'm just gonna save it like that. And you can see that it is compiling the sketch right here. And you can see right down here, it says done compiling. Sketch uses 974 bytes or 3% of program storage space. Maximum is 32,256 bytes or around 32 kilobytes. So what else do we have here? Let's take a look. Now, whenever you hit upload, it's going to verify it first and then upload. Now, the cool thing about um, this program is it can find hiccups in there. I'm going to deliberately add a hiccup into here. So let's take away that that semicolon right there and let's see what happens when I try to verify it. Boom, instantly finds it. So the error message was expected semicolon before digital write, which as you can see is what it is. So that's one of the other great things that I like about Arduino is it tells you exactly where to find the problems. Let's verify it again. It works. So you would then, once your Arduino is hooked up and you have it selected in your port, you would then hit upload. Now I have already uploaded this program into the Arduino. So let's go ahead and go take a look and see what it does. All right, so we're going to hook in a 12 volt power supply, which is the maximum power that an Arduino Uno can handle. You can also power this using the five volt USB connection. And you can see once I hook it up, the program runs and we get that LED strobe that looks like police lights. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this gives you the beginning of the understanding of how the Arduino works, how the programming works. Next week, we will be doing Arduino sensors. We'll be taking a look at a photoresistor and an infrared sensor, which are the ones that I use most commonly on my layout. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything, including the 1,000 subscriber contest. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from DIY and Digital. Happy railroading.